Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Joseph Demers. I'm the president of Backman Technologies. And today I'm creating a video to uh, show viewers our new line of terahertz spectrometers. This is the brand new release PB7300 frequency domain terahertz spectrometer. And this is the form that most customers purchase the unit in, which is a very compact, lightweight uh, spectrometer. It was designed specifically for avionics applications for remote detecting of gases and or I should say detection of gases at remote locations. Uh, it is 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters by 50 millimeters high. We also we also offer the terahertz spectrometer, the PB7300 in rack mount uh, for customers that just want to use it in the laboratory and maybe want some custom modifications made. This particular unit has a, an optical phase modulator installed. This allows us to modulate the terahertz radiation at 6 kilohertz and then detect the first and the second harmonics of the modulation. Now those two harmonics are 90 degrees out of phase and therefore when you add them together after detection you can get rid of the pesky fringe pattern that occurs with standard homodyne detection techniques with the, the frequency domain terahertz spectrometers. So let me do a little demonstration now. We're going to scan from 1 terahertz to 1.3 terahertz. We're simply looking at the water vapor that's in the atmosphere here in the laboratory in about 10 centimeters of path length. So we'll start. We don't need a background, so we're going to skip that. And we'll start Let me expand this window. So we're going to take a 1 gigahertz resolution. We'll be doing a 100 millisecond time constant, which means every point is integrated for 100 milliseconds before taking the next point. In the top screen, we're going to have the first harmonic. This is, if, if you own a basic system, this is what your output typically is. And here you can see the fringe pattern that occurs. If you're looking at narrow transitions in gases, and that transition should fall on one of these nulls, uh, where because of the coherent detection, the terahertz radiation in the local oscillator and the terahertz radiation through your sample, they destructively interfere, then you're not going to be able to measure the line. You're just out of luck. But with the second harmonic system, for every null that's in the first harmonic, there's a peak in the second harmonic. And these are balanced. And if you go and look at the sum of the two, you'll see that there is no fringe pattern. And as you take more and more data, so that these systems can do averaging, where they scan up in frequency and then back down, the, the noise on the signal will decrease, and you'll be left with just your water lines, which you can see here, here, and here. Okay, after we let this complete, I'll show you another neat aspect of the second harmonic detection. So one of the interesting features with the second harmonic that frankly surprised us how well it worked is that if you adjust the heads, generally speaking with, with these frequency domain systems and the time domain systems, you have to balance the distance between your heads with the fiber lengths. And it's, you get about a centimeter worth of give on that. But with the first and second harmonic detection, <clears throat> you can be off by five, six, seven centimeters. And if you t start taking the data, it looks like noise, or it's very irregular. It doesn't look like noise. But there is no nice, consistent fringe pattern. Historically, this meant you weren't going to see very good data and, and that you were sampling the fringe pattern off and on, which meant you wouldn't see nice low signal-to-noise ratios. So here, we have a very irregular um, fringe pattern. Like I said, we've moved the heads about five uh, centimeters. And so the first and second harmonic, though, are still completely out of phase, 90 degrees out of phase. And when you sum them, again, you get a beautiful spectrum where there's no fringe pattern. Actually, it looks a little bit better than it did when there was a much stronger fringe pattern because the spacing does not give you a little bit of residual uh, error when you're doing the summation. 
So we'll let this complete a scan up and back. And we will take a look at what the data looks like. So now that we have the system more in balance than it was previously, we're actually getting a cleaner signal on the summation because the fringe pattern spacing is less than one gigahertz, which is our step size. But because we're adding the first and second harmonics, uh, we get a nice smooth summation with our water lines clearly visible and very little signal to noise or, or much better signal to noise ratio. We can even start to see some of the smaller water lines that were invisible previously. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and uh, email us with any questions or perhaps for a quote. Thank you.